everybody. Is this good? Um, I'm Heather Carrick. I'm a senior research engineer at the Applied Research Lab in Pier 9 for Autodesk. And I'm here to talk about uh, the project that you probably have all seen at the, the entrance to the exhibit hall, which is the, the large-scale, high-performance metal 3D printing that we're doing with robots. So I, I want to be able to make anything anywhere. And when t t with today's technology, if you want to make a complex or complicated object, usually 3D printing is, is your only option to make some shapes. But anyone who's ever 3D printed is familiar with this. 3D printed spaghetti, otherwise known as a failed 3D print. And for those who are less familiar with printing, this tends to happen when something goes wrong in the machine. And that can be that the layer is too high or the layer is too low. When, when the printer is laying, it's the next layer that it's, that it's stacking up. Um, maybe there's something wrong with their support material. Moral of the story is something went wrong and your machine has no idea. It's just going to keep on going as if nothing has happened and it's going to snowball until you get a giant mess. But what if we had smarter machines that knew what we wanted to do and were able to help us? If they could, they knew our goals and were, were able to, to respond to what we were doing and what was going on around them. And that's something that we've been exploring. So at the Applied Research Lab, we have a bunch of robots. Why robots? Um, six axis industrial robot arms like the ones pictured back here are incredibly versatile machines. They are not limited to boxes or build plates like standard 3D printers or CNC machines. Um, you can pretty much put anything on them. You can see on this guy, robots come with a blank face. You can stick any tool that you can create or buy on them and it suddenly turns into whatever tool you need. And you can program, it, program them to do a variety of tasks. The problem with six axis robot arms today is that they're really hard to program. It takes a lot of people months and months and months and lots of time and money in order to get a machine calibrated and tooled and set up just right. And usually at that point, even though this machine can do an infinite number of things, it usually is relegated to one of those number of things for the rest of its usable life. And the other problem with robots is that while they're very sophisticated, they're also very dumb. They do not know anything that you don't tell them. Like any, any programmable, com computationally based machine, they will do exactly what you ask them to even if you didn't know that that's what you asked them to do. So our robot can crash into the wall of our lab. If we have a tool on it, it can crash that tool into itself. It has no way of knowing what's going on around it unless you explicitly tell it that information. And so that makes robots very challenging to work with because a lot of tools aren't in place currently to help that robot input more information. But what if that weren't the case? What if the robot could know what was going on around it what if the robot could know what you wanted to do? What if the robot could know if something has changed in its environment? And that's something that we've been exploring in the Applied Research Lab with a product that we've nicknamed Shrimp, um, Supervised High Rate Metal Printing. So with Shrimp, we have our um, robot arm that you've probably all seen back there. We've named him Ash. Um, and he's got a MIG welder on it. So the hardware was pretty straightforward. Strap a MIG welder onto a robot. You have a metal 3D printer. Bravo. But the tricky part is then getting the robot to do anything. How do we tell the robot the shape that we want it to print? How do we tell the robot how fast to go, how, what amperage to use, whether or not something's gone wrong? And the way we started doing that was just sticking a bunch of sensors on it. So we've been mostly using vision, but we're, we're interested in some other things that are things that only computers or sensors can detect. Like I have eyes, I have vision. It's an easy way to start understanding like what I can see and how can I get the robot to see the things that I can see. But we can start expanding this platform to things that I'm unable to detect, like what is the current? How hot is this? And, um, and use that information to feed back and make a much smarter system. So when we got started, we started easy. We did lines, two-dimensional drawings, and a single camera. All we had to do was figure out, trying to go straight up, are we going straight up? If we go a little to the left, get the robot to get itself to go back to the right in order to compensate and end up, end up centered. So we started pretty, pretty straightforward, doing straight lines, lattices. Then we started getting a little more ambitious, started doing some 3D shapes. Um, so using, using multiple cameras, doing two-dimensional objects. When you're trying to do a 2D object, do you have a back of it? And that's, if you're looking straight at something, you can only see, you only see the front of it. So trying to figure out, okay, if that's, that's how objects work, how, how can we look around it? Do we need multiple cameras? Do we have to have the robot move around? That's a cool thing, we can, robots can move. So if you, if you go back and look at our robot, you'll notice that when it, when it looks at, at the object that it's printed, it can move around that object. It can start doing 360 views. So we can take advantage of the, the versatility of this machine to not only be the printer, but to also be 
be its own its own um, sort of camera mover. Um, and then we've gotten more sophisticated with things like like laser scanners and 3D point clouds. So we've been kind of combining all that information so that we can tell the robot not only the thing that we want it to print, but also how close it's gotten. Because with, with traditional printing, the robot only knows where it thinks it should be. Now we can tell the robot where it actually is. So if the robot is too, if the weld is too high, which can happen a lot with this kind of metal, when if the weld is cold, you might end up with a really skinny, tall weld. If the weld is really hot, you'll end up with a short, fat weld. And that will vary over heat, it'll vary in different environments. There's all these different variables that are, are unpredictable and that can be hard to account for up front. And we don't have to account for them up front anymore. We can now tell the robot like, hey, you printed a little low that time. You're gonna need to go, the robot can basically tell itself actually. We don't, have to, we don't even have to intervene when, when everything is up and running. That the robot will then do its next layer height down a little bit further. And so we don't miss, miss our layers. And so we will have no more 3D printed metal spaghetti. And so here's just sort of a quick video for, for those who have not yet seen us. If we can play my video, please. Um, so yeah, this project is pretty much just uh, exploring what, what can happen when we start adding sensors and intelligence. Like once we can start introducing machine learning to this process, like how can the robot know if its weld is good? There's a, there's a, really, a really beautiful sound to a happy MIG weld. It sounds sort of, someone described it as frying bacon. And so if we can teach the robot what frying bacon sounds like, and if, it's, if it sounds crunchy or it sounds sputtery for the robot to know to, to know that that's bad and to learn that that's a bad sound, to learn not to do the thing that it did to make that bad sound. And when it learns the good sound, it can learn to start doing the thing that makes the good sound. There's like an incredible potential to turn machines like six axis robot arms into, into the, the kind of versatile and robust machines that they can be and that they've had the potential to be for the last 30 years, but have been sort of relegated to, to single, single purpose versatile objects because of software. Um, so yeah, if you guys want, you should come check us out uh, right by the entrance to the exhibit hall. I'll be there. A few of my teammates will be there. We're happy to talk more about our research. Thanks. <laughs>